Hi, today we're looking at photographing peregrine falcons. Now the peregrine is a very common bird today. When I was a youngster they were very scarce but today they're widespread, they're breeding in our cities and our towns and industrial estates and on the cliffs on our coast. A very very common bird and although you can go and photograph them on our town buildings you really need an open aspect. The nearest one to me is Leamington Spa and I've been there a couple of times this year. It's easy to find. You just Google Peregrine's Town, the name of your town, you'll, you'll find one close to you. Um, but it's just, it's very built up around the town hall where they, they breathe. And there's a great big tree next to the town hall. And so you don't tend to see the Peregrine coming. Now I'm sure somebody has got good pictures of Peregrines there, but I had two sessions, I got nothing. They were just suddenly there and gone. I didn't need to see them approaching. Now there are other places I've been to in our towns where you do get that open aspect, but on our cliffs, that's much better. It's nearly always open. So I can see them here flying about, coming in from 200 meters away. So it's much better photography. And also you're higher up, you're at least level with the bird quite often. And quite often you're looking down at them. You've got the back of the bird. And although it's one of the fastest flying birds, or is it the fastest flying bird, that's really when it's stooping, when it's diving down to catch its prey. When they're flying along the cliff, especially into the wind, it's actually coming quite slowly. It's not a difficult bird to auto-focus on in flight. Now there's some wonderful examples on YouTube of peregrines in flight, and they're fantastic. Really good samples of what the Sony A1, Canon R5, R6 can do today. But I look at them and think, well, yeah, great, love the, love the pictures, but I actually think my Olympus could do that, or even the Canon cameras that I used to own before Olympus. It's not that difficult a bird. It's also, it's quite big, as well as relatively slow flying, and it flies in a relatively straight line as it's going along the cliff. It does do its tumbling from time to time, but a lot of the time it's just coming dead straight. It's also fairly contrasty. I'll show you some pictures of a tufted duck I took with my Canon gear. Now this is quite old Canon, Canon gear now. I can't remember what camera it is. I'll look it up when I post it, probably the 1DS. Um, but the bird, the tufted duck, is flying towards me. Managed to autofocus on it very, very well. But I put that down to it being a contrasted bird. The contrast of a tufted duck gives the autofocus something to lock on. If you've just got a raven, just a black bird against a dark background, it would struggle a lot more. So the peregrine is quite contrasty. So as it's flying towards you, autofocus has got more opportunity to lock onto it. Nevertheless, I've been using the Sony A1 here today with the 200 to 600 zoom, and it's coped with it very well. Now this is my third session here. The last two days when I've arrived, I've walked up to this spot. The peregrine has been sitting on its plucking ridge over there and didn't even bother looking at me, just ignored me and I set my tripod up and was able to photograph it. They become very tolerant of people walking along this cliff path. It's a constant stream of people all day long, they take no notice of you. On the ridge in front of me there are several piles of feathers. This ridge is obviously used as a plucking area and this is one of the juvenile birds. You can see the brown on the top of the head indicating it's a young bird. It also has a, a softer look to it than the adults. And the juveniles would land on this ridge quite frequently, every 30 minutes or so. They would drop in and have a rest and then fly off, circle around, come backwards and forwards along the cliff. They gave plenty of opportunity for flight pictures and from time to time would disappear for half an hour, presumably resting up somewhere else. slightly lower down the ridge. Now these are all taken with the Sony A1 and the 200-600 with a 2 times extender on, both the video and the stills pictures. So that's 1200mm on a full chip camera. So you can see they are at a fair distance from you, but still photographable. Most of the time I'm concentrating on birds in flight and for that I want to take the extenders off. Whether it's the 1.4 or the 2x extender, it does slow the autofocus down and you want to give yourself every chance. Now brilliant though the autofocus is on the Sony A1, you've still got to assist it. So you need to be roughly in focus at the point where you're going to pick the bird up. So by pre-focusing on the grass on this bank 
at about the distance where I'm first going to get a reasonable image size of the peregrine, I pre-focus. If the focus is totally out, if you want the, the sea in the background for instance, it won't recognise the shape of a bird. But here, as soon as I touched the autofocus button, it locked onto this peregrine and tracked it absolutely perfectly. Shutter speed, 2500th of a second, lens wide open, auto ISO, which for most of the pictures was a very low ISO, about 400 or 800 ISO. I've always got the camera on the maximum frames per second, so that should be up to 30 frames per second. And for this burst you can see the light was much better, the sun is getting underneath the bird because I'm photographing towards the end of the day when the sunlight is low. The best light is always in the mornings or the late evenings. This was my favourite sequence from the sessions I had there. The sky was blue, the sun was low down and shining, and the bird banked at just the right moment. The only issue is keeping up with it. Can I move the camera fast enough? I need to catch up a bit, it's gone too far to the left. And eventually I got the, the right balance just before the bird turned away from me. None of these pictures are cropped, they're all full frame. Autofocus works just as well as the bird is coming towards you and also works when it's against the sea. It doesn't jump onto the background as my Canon cameras always used to. Now there was up to five peregrines flying around and I know that because I saw these four, or photographed these four, but there was another bird in front of them. So the three behind are the juveniles, the one in front is an adult and it's carrying some sort of prey in its talons. So I know there was five birds here. The picture you really want is the food pass between the adult and the youngsters and I didn't really achieve that other than at a great distance. So this is a very heavy crop. When young peregrines first fledge they remain in the vicinity of the nest site practicing their flying skills. So it's at this time of year you get the best opportunity for flight photography and they tend to fledge after the first week of June up to July. Thanks for watching.